Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome to part 22 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. Now that we've got our vehicle accelerating, we can look at two types of deceleration. The first is just the sort of natural passive deceleration that will happen when you release the accelerate button and you just kind of slow and roll to a stop. The second is actively pressing the brake button, which will be a much faster deceleration. However, both of these work in the exact same way, and they frankly work the same way as our acceleration, just in reverse. So basically we're just taking that same acceleration equation that we used prior and instead of starting with the um, initial velocity of zero and going up to the max speed, now we're starting with the max speed and going down to zero. So really we're just dealing with a negative linear acceleration now. So let's jump into monodevelop and see how this is going to work. So here in our vehicle controller we're going to add a couple of new times that are going to be public floats. So we're going to have a public float time max to zero and that just represents when we're just rolling to a stop, kind of that passive deceleration. And we're going to make this something like say six, take six seconds to roll to a stop. We're not, you know, there's no real forces on the car, it's just kind of friction doing its job so it'll take a little while for it to happen. Second we're going to have a public float time break to zero. And this one's going to be a lot quicker. We're going to make this take just one second to go from, if you're at maximum speed, it'll just take you one second to come to a dead stop. Now along with these, we also need to calculate our rates per second. So we're going to have a float decel rate per second and a float break rate per second. And we're going to calculate both of those at start as well. So we'll say decel rate per second equals, and now we're going to say negative max speed because we want this to be, like I say, a negative acceleration um, line. And we could do it where we're just subtracting the deceleration rate from our forward velocity, but this way we're kind of being a little bit more consistent and it's going to be really helpful a little bit down the line. So simply negative max speed divided by time max to zero. And likewise, our break rate per second is going to also be negative max speed divided by time break to zero. Now with all those, we have everything we need to actually kind of enact this, these deceleration um, actions. So the first one we're going to do here is we're going to say if in our read input, we're going to check if our break button is being pressed. So we'll say if data.buttons1 which is going to be our break button, equals true. Then, forward velocity, actually we can, we can copy this. It's pretty much going to work the same way. Copy this, but then instead of adding our acceleration rate per second, we're going to add our break rate per second. And the other thing we need to check here now is because we're going negative, we don't want to ever break and then start going in reverse because we're breaking. We always want to come to a complete stop. So we want to, instead of checking here, we were checking did we exceed the maximum speed. Now we want to check did we go below zero? Are we starting to move backward? And if so, just reset our speed to zero. So instead of forward velocity and max speed, we're going to check forward velocity and zero. And we don't want the minimum, we want the maximum now, because if this is below zero, we want to go back up to the maximum of zero. So max, mathf.max gives us that number. Save that there, and now we can go back over to Unity, and we should see here now, if we hit play, uh, let's reset this so we have a little bit of room here. I'm going to hold the space button down for a couple seconds here, and now I can press Z and come to a stop. So that's the first step here. Secondly, now we need to tell our uh, vehicle what to do if nothing is being pressed, then you need to start kind of rolling to a stop. So what we can do here is we're going to say in our late update function, we're going to say if new input, then we are going to take just take our velocity and uh, put in the whatever our speedometer is saying right now. That is fine. However, if we are not putting in any input, then we know that we're just, you know, we've got nothing, no feet on no pedals, if you will, then we need to calculate our speed again, but based on that deceleration rate. So we can copy these again, paste them down here. We can say our forward velocity plus equals our 
decel rate per second, and this actually works just fine because we're still checking until we get to zero and then we're stopping. Now we do need to, need to make sure again that we also um, apply our velocity still, because otherwise this will calculate all this and then never actually tell our vehicle what its new speed should be. But with this in here now, we are actually going to um, check and see if nothing is being pressed, then I can slowly slow the vehicle down until it comes to a stop. I can jump back over here for a sec and see this in action as well. Um, do it. I could reset this, but I'm also going to show you we can just rotate this so that we can get ourselves. Ooh, there's some nice driving space there. Click in the scene or the game view, hit space, start accelerating, and I can let go. And you see we do slowly come to a stop. Meanwhile, spin back around here. If I were to press and hold this. Build up speed, build up speed, build up speed. I'm going my max speed, and then I hit Z. I come to a much quicker stop because I'm braking. So that's exactly what we want there. One little bit of housekeeping here we notice is that I did copy this, these two lines of code, um, so that there's now three, basically three copies of the same code with a slight variation there. So what we really should do here is create some kind of a function that we can call, or a method that we can call in all of these situations. It's pretty easy to do. We're just going to say down here, void. We'll call this accelerate, because technically speaking, it's all acceleration, it's just some of it's negative. And instead of um, you know, just calling it here up here, we're, we can just call this accelerate method and just pass in whichever, whichever of these rates is most pertinent. So I'm going to call like float. Um, we'll just call this accelerate. It's a little bit similar to this, but um, we'll just call it float excel. And then we'll, all we have to do here now is we can copy one of these, paste this in here, and now instead of putting in whichever specific variable we want, we can just pass in the parameter that we have here. Now the only other issue with this is that we're doing two different things here. Here we're looking for the minimum speed, either our velocity or the maximum and you know to kind of keep it within the maximum. Here we're looking for the maximum, either looking at our speed or going to zero. And so we could do this a couple ways. We could have kind of a check and see is this a positive or negative acceleration, and then um, call either math f max or math f min. I'm going to do this a little bit differently though in this case. All we're going to do here is we're going to say math f clamp. And this will give us, keep us within a value between our minimum and our maximum. If I go over um, to the alternate here, we have these with floats, which is exactly what we want. So all we're going to be doing here is we're going to check, is our forward velocity between, and I think if I hit a space here, uh, there we go. We need our value first, forward velocity, and then we need our minimum, and then finally our maximum. So I'm going to put in between these two, zero for our minimum, and then our max speed. So, with that in here, now what we can actually do is we can get rid of all three of these and just call our accelerate method with the appropriate rate. So here we're going to call accelerate decel rate per second, accelerate break rate per second, and up here just our accelerate per second. Uh, I don't like that, that doesn't look clean, which is the whole point of this particular endeavor. There we go, save that. So now our code is a lot cleaner. Um, we could do something similar here, but because we're going to start putting in things like steering too, I'm actually, this is this structure right here is probably going to change a little bit in the next video or two. So we're just going to keep that as is for now with the two um, setting the velocities, but we will optimize that in a future video. So with that, we can go back to our scene here, hit play, and we should see again everything still works as planned. We can accelerate, quickly brake, or we can accelerate and slowly roll to a stop. So with that, our major points of acceleration and deceleration are all set. All that's left is to put in some um, 
steering and uh, reverse motion and we will have our vehicle pretty much good to go. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.